Starting an art channel, whether it's tutorials or commentary, requires a lot of work and dedication. There's a lot that goes into growing a successful YouTube channel, and today I wanted to talk about the ways in which I go about creating my own content and the tips and tricks I use to grow my influence on YouTube. Hi guys, gals, gays, and theys, I'm Omnia, and today I'm coming at you with a very different but highly requested video about my advice for those looking to start a successful art channel or art commentary channel like my own. I've gotten countless DMs and emails asking me how did I start my own channel channel and what advice I'd give to people who are thinking about doing the same things I do. I personally think that there's a lot that goes into creating content on YouTube regardless of what that content is. However, despite the effort that goes into it, it is also extremely rewarding and satisfying to create something that you're actually proud of and I'm here to try and help you navigate that in this video. Let's get into it. The first thing I want to discuss when it comes to creating a successful art channel is essential to all types of businesses, and that's branding. When it comes to branding, there are specific things you need to think about in terms of aesthetics and appearances. For example, your channel banner, profile picture, background images, end screens, and even thumbnails should all share a common theme. This allows your content to be more distinguishable across the platform while also simply making your channel more appealing to look at. I personally use the website Canva to create my channel banner, Patreon panel, and end screen, and I use Photoshop 2020 for my thumbnails. Furthermore, your art style can also be an integral part of your brand. When it comes to forming that style, it's important to have an idea about where your inspirations lie. You may be inspired by other artists on social media or animated series that you enjoy. The same can be said for the topics you discuss on your channel. Find inspiration in other art commentary channels like Creepshow Art or Ahaha, <laughs> Ya Girl. Omnia, <laughs> and use that to fuel your own unique approach to commentary. Look into topics that you're intrigued by and figure out a way to incorporate that into your content. For example, as a black person, I'm personally interested in topics regarding race and make it a point to include that in a number of different videos on my channel, like my Blacktober video with Thuman or my video on Reddit Goldstein. These topics are personally relevant to me and I feel compelled to talk about them and provide my take on them. Once you have a definitive grasp on your inspirations for both your art style and content ideas, going about finding a topic to discuss should be your next priority. When it comes to finding a topic, I personally find it easier to do research on subjects I actually like rather than ones that don't interest me. Think about topics you would research or look into anyways, regardless of whether or not you had an audience to entertain. That should be a fairly safe place to start. Do you like following art drama on Instagram? Go there! Or maybe you enjoy following a problematic YouTuber just to see what scandals they get into next? Talk about it. I personally believe that commentary is all about providing your take on an issue in a relatively fair and balanced way. So be objective and listen to all sides of a story before making a decision on what to cover or how to cover it. This naturally leads us into our next point, which is scripting. After you have secured a video topic idea, it's time to do the work. But before we start getting into the flow of things, I think this side tangent is a focal point in creating good content and you should definitely keep this in mind as you go about pursuing a YouTube career, and that is creating a solid, positive atmosphere to work in. Creating a productive workspace is hard enough, let alone in a global pandemic, which is why I think it's important to be attentive to your needs and the products that allow you to get into the best headspace to work. To illustrate that, I wanted to introduce my own mini workspace along with a tour of my own desk. Though it's not perfect, it's what works for me and my personal goals for my channel now, and that's the most important thing to keep in mind when looking to create your own workspace. Ask yourself, how effective is your workspace in helping you create the content you want to be creating? As for me, my current workspace fits my exact needs. My Comhart all-in-one height-adjustable desk from FlexiSpot is a perfect balance between functionality and aesthetics, which is something that I personally really appreciate in my workplace. Not only is the desk spacious and ergonomic, but it also has a height adjustment process which allows you to tailor the height of the desk to suit your exact needs. Whether you're looking to sit at your desk or get up to stand, the keypad on the side allows for a range of heights from a mere 28 inches to a maximum of 47 inches. There are also height memory presets integrated into the keypad which allow you to save a specific height that you enjoy working at and returning to that height whenever you want. The height adjustment process is simple and instantaneous and gives you the chance to switch up your workflow whenever you're feeling stagnant. I personally find this feature to be a especially useful for me, specifically when I'm drawing and having trouble getting things right. FlexiSpot has a variety of different height adjustable desks that allow for that dynamic sit-stand feature and has also been proven to be a reliable company for producing customizable and efficient desks. They also offer free shipping to 48 states, a 5-year warranty, and a 30-day risk-free period to return the desk if you are unsatisfied. If you're looking for a desk that can promote both personal health and productivity in your workspace, a FlexiSpot all-in-one standing desk is essential. Check the link in the description box below where you can get $15 off your purchase of a FlexiSpot all-in-one height-adjustable desk now. 
Of course, having a really high quality desk helps a ton with video production and your general energy when going about working on videos, but naturally the next question is, how do you produce videos? There are four general phases that I would say go into creating a video. One, researching, two, scripting, three, recording and editing, and four, releasing. Each one is pretty straightforward, but let's get into each of them briefly to get a feel for how they contribute to the overall video quality. First off, we have research. This ensures that the facts presented in the video are accurate and credible. This is where you would compile screenshots, watch other videos, look for evidence of claims, and begin to build a case with the information you can gather. Secondly, we have scripting. Scripting allows for you to put your thoughts onto paper in a more eloquent manner. It gives you the opportunity to think about what you want to say and the ways in which you want to say it. This is essential in commentary since you obviously want to communicate your stance in the most effective and accurate way possible. Thirdly, there's recording and editing. My personal kryptonite stage, but absolutely necessary if you're trying to distinguish yourself from other up-and-coming art commentary channels. Editing has two main parts, the audio and the video, but we'll talk more about that in the equipment section. Lastly, we have releasing. This stage is, by far, the most exciting since you finally get to show the world all your hard work. Releasing still requires work, however. It includes making your thumbnail, putting tags in the description, linking your sources, and other post-processing things like mid-rolls and closed captions. And although I can't teach you how to script or how to edit, there are plenty of tutorial videos out there for using certain video editing softwares, how to create thumbnails in Photoshop, how to tag your YouTube videos, etc. There's a lot of learning that comes with creating YouTube videos, so do your best to seek out tutorials and get educated. Lastly, one of the biggest things that aspiring content creators worry about is equipment. Contrary to popular belief, you don't really need any fancy equipment to start an art commentary channel. All you really need is a mic to record audio, a screen recording software to capture your speed paints, and a software to splice your audio and video together. You can even record audio on your phone. You don't need to buy a new Blue Yeti or invest in Premiere Pro. A lavalier mic is good enough. You can find some for as little as $10 on Amazon, or if you're willing to spend some racks, a Blue Snowball works just fine as well. As for screen recording software, OBS, Bandicam, XSplit, and Fraps are all viable options. For audio editing, I personally use Audacity, but you can also try Audition if you're the fancy type. Lastly, for video editing, I personally use VSDC, but Sony Vegas Pro and Camtasia are also really good alternatives. That's most, if not all, of the tips and tricks that I can give you to cultivate a thriving art commentary channel. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and I'll try my best to respond to them accordingly. Thanks so much for watching and a special thank you goes out to my patrons, including my newest patron, Jay Draws. Thank you to Tengoku Light on Twitter for this lovely fan art and I'll catch y'all next time. Bye!